Hello everyone, this video is going to be all about sunsets in the Peak District. So, I'm back at Mamtor. I didn't plan to be, I plan to be in Wales right now. Um, I plan to go to see a lighthouse there on the north coast uh, in North Wales. And uh, I've planned it all out, I've got the, uh, the route in my sat nav already. And then by chance I found on the internet that uh, North Wales was going into lockdown. <laughs> so instead, at short notice I decided that I'll come back to Mamtor in the Peak District. Uh, I did a video here a while back, uh, that was at sunrise, so uh, I'll link that up top now. Uh, but I thought I'd come back and I'd do a sunset today. So the sunset is coming down in this direction over here. Uh, and in a moment I'm going to start taking some photos of the road that goes through to Edale and uh, hopefully we'll get some really nice colours in the sky as the sun goes down. So this is my composition. I've got the, the road that goes to Edale that winds all the way through the valley. That just takes your eye through the picture and obviously you've got the hill in the background there with the sun setting behind it. I think that's quite a nice composition. So right now I'm at F11, um, I've got an ISO 64, got my tripod so it doesn't really matter too much about movement, um, there's not much wind so that's good. Um, I'm using bracketing, so if you don't know that means that you can take a series of shots, you can usually choose the number so I'm taking uh, three shots and in between those shots it's going to change a variable and in my case it's going to change the, uh, the exposure. So when I take my first shot it'll be set at, at normal exposure, the second shot will be minus one stop and then the subsequent one will be plus one stop. So I'm looking out, I'm in aperture priority mode, like I said F11, ISO 64, take one shot, two shot, three shot, and each one of those will be at different exposures which I can later blend in Lightroom uh, to create a high dynamic range image. So I'm also taking some shots from this angle as well. Um, you haven't got the nice road winding through the scene on this one, but you have got some nice light on the left hand side of the hill there. And we've still got the sun going down behind the hill, so yeah, it looks really nice, I think. So the sun's almost gone down now, I've got the last dying light, but there's still some really cool colours in the sky. Uh, I'm still going to get one or two more shots before we go. Uh, and then, yeah, back to the car, get some coffee, and then home and into Lightroom. I think it's been a good one. What a fantastic evening up in the Peak District. The weather was perfect, the light was brilliant, there was not too much cloud cover but there was just enough so that there was some interest in the sky, the light was great, the weather was great, there was no rain, there was no wind, so nothing to complain about at all and I'm really pleased with some of the results I got this week. Uh, before we go into the images and I'll show you some of those, I'm just going to talk a little bit about bracketing because I mentioned that earlier. So like I said, bracketing is uh, it's a tool that you can use most DSLRs or mirrorless cameras have this function and it allows you just to take a series of shots and the camera will automatically change a variable uh, as you take each shot. So on the Z7 you would go into the menu, it's in the top menu item here under the little camera symbol and you need to find auto bracketing. You can choose the number of shots, so there it's taking three shots, there's five and then the increment you can choose how much it changes. So I'm changing the exposure by one stop, two stops, or three stops. So in my case, I was changing the exposure between each shot. I was taking a series of three shots. The first one was taking an exposure with whatever the settings were in my camera at the time. The second shot was 
increasing the exposure by one stop of light, and then the third shot would be minus one stop of light. And then I can take those three images into Lightroom and blend them to create a image which has uh, an increased amount of high dynamic range. And I'll show you what that means in Lightroom now. So you'll see here, we've got a series of three images. We've got this one, this one, and this one. So that was the first one, which was kind of like my normal settings. Just have a quick look at that. ISO 64, 24 millimeters, F11, one one hundredth of a second. My second shot was the same settings, but this one, the camera has decreased the uh, the exposure bias by minus one. And then in this one, it's increased it by plus one. Um, the first thing to say is that all of these shots are slightly underexposed and it's better to slightly underexpose than overexpose and I can show you what I mean by that. If we um, take this image here, it's quite dark down in this area, but in Lightroom with a raw file, you can really bump that up without too many problems at all. And you can get quite a lot of extra light back in those dark areas. If we look at this one, which is not part of the, the series I'm working on right now, but this one is slightly overexposed. You see the sky is really bright white. Down here, it looks much better. However, if we try to go the other way now and reduce the exposure, you'll see not much, if any, detail comes back in the sky. So it's always better to work on an underexposed image than an overexposed one. I mean, if you can get perfect, great, but in this case, we've got a really bright sky and a dark, um, landscape, so we have to underexpose or overexpose one of them, so it's better to underexpose. And if you're using a mobile phone to take an image like this, what a lot of people don't realise is that your phone will actually do this method as well. It will take a series of shots, when you press the button, it will take a series of shots at different exposures and it will automatically combine those uh, as best it thinks, and it pretty much does a good job these days with most cameras, uh, the latest cameras are really good creating high dynamic range images. And uh, yeah, so you'll get great results. I'm, um, I'm not against phone cameras at all, I use it all the time. But you do get a lot more control when you do it with a DSLR or mirrorless, and uh, then you can control it all yourself, the blending in Lightroom. And as well as that, you obviously can control depth of field, you can control shutter speed, and you've got more options with lenses and things. So um, yeah, two completely different tools, but definitely got a lot more control uh, with a DSLR or mirrorless camera. So back to Lightroom. We've got the three images here. And all you have to do in Lightroom to combine those is press shift on your keyboard and highlight the three that you want to use. And then right click and photo merge HDR. And then Lightroom will automatically think about that uh, and bring up this little window here. Um, I usually choose high, uh, select auto align. Um, hopefully if you've had it on a tripod, all your free images will be quite well aligned anyway, but auto align will just help with any slight imperfections. I untick auto settings just because I want to see what it looks like before I start changing anything. You don't need to show de-ghost overlay and tick create stack. And then if you were doing this, you'd click merge. I've already done this, so I'm, I'm just gonna click cancel and I'll show you the, the one that I merged, which was this one. So you'll see here, it looks quite dark, um, but we can bring a lot of that back by just going straight to auto. And it brings a lot of the lighter areas back, but because we've also got information in the sky now, the darker areas from the darker exposures, it also brings a lot of that back as well. And I play with that a little bit more just to bring it up like that. And then my final edit, I just remove some things in Photoshop, uh, like the flare and the odd person or car on the road. Uh, and that's the final image. So exposure bracketing can really help 
it can just give you that extra little bit of dynamic range to play around with, particularly when you were taking shots like I was into the sun and you've got areas of really bright sky, a dark landscape, just gives you that little bit of extra wiggle room to bring your highlights down and your shadows up. So here are a few more of the shots that I got. So that's almost it for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed getting out earlier in the week. It was a great evening, great to get out in the fresh air. I always like it in the Peak District, particularly on an evening when it's such good weather. And uh, yeah, it was a great sunset and I got some great images, I think. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. And if you're new to the channel, give it a subscribe by clicking here or down here. And that is it. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot. See you later.